Got big problems at the grow rack going on right now. Thought we would not have these issues this year because we started a lot later than we usually would to prevent this. Everybody was looking great up here. Now they're all looking okay at best. So many people ask, what's wrong with my seedlings? They're wilting or the leaves are turning yellow. So there could be multiple problems, but there's a couple different problems that tie into each other that can make this happen. And it's almost a joke because we talk about too much water, too little water, but there's something that happens inside your pots when you're growing your plants and they start getting too big for the vessel you have them in. You get a problem called root bound. I've got a couple plants on the healing rack over here that really demonstrate what root bound looks like. Definitely a lot better than they looked earlier. When I came in earlier, this guy was completely wilted down, almost looked 100% dead. It's looking a lot better now. I gave it some water. There is a big problem going in inside here, and you can feel it. When you squeeze this, it's rock hard. You go to water it, water can't get through. You water it from the bottom, water can't go up. Root bound. And real quick for all you haters about my light video saying that the cheap shop lights will not let plants flower. These guys are flowering just fine. This one back here, I hand pollinated, so probably gonna get some fruit set on there. I have thousands of cannabis seeds I saved from some plants that were growing on my property. This plant is looking pretty good. Go over here. These plants are looking not pretty good. So just like the tomatoes, these were soil blocks that I started these in and I transferred these soil blocks into these solo cups. I have drainage holes at the bottom. If I water this from the top, the water goes straight through, comes right out the bottom. So we are not overwatered. The soil right now is just damp to the touch, not too wet, not too dry. It's perfect. But our leaves are curling. We have some starting to droop down low. That tells me that this plant has exceeded this pot and it's not getting the airflow around the roots it needs. Seems like everybody else in here is doing pretty good. This guy's a little stocky, but everything looks healthy there. The comfrey's looking good. The ground cherries looking good in the soil blocks. Everything grows great in the soil blocks because of the air that gets in there. It's getting a little depressing in there, so we had to come outside. This is that bigger tomato I had just two days ago. This thing was inside a solo cup. So a tomato about a foot and a half high was thriving in a solo cup until I saw that it was starting to get root bound. So I had to take one of these recycled pots I have here and pot it up. And it's currently in the recovery process. I think everything's gonna be fine with this, but I still have two weeks before I'm transplanting these out to my garden. When your plants get root bound, you need to put them into bigger pots. Now, I don't have 30 of these laying around, but what I do have is a bunch of water bottles that I've been saving for the past couple months. So I cut the top off the water bottle and I took a pair of scissors and I made little slits on the bottoms here for drainage. Because I want my roots to have airflow, I'm gonna take a pocket knife and I'm just gonna poke a bunch of holes in the side of this thing. Try not to cut myself, of course. I'm also taking some scissors after the knife and just kind of scoring these things. Like, I can get my finger through this at this point. It's a pretty decent sized hole. You think dirt's going to come out, but if you pack the soil right, it's not. This is going to be really important for my last couple weeks here before I transplant outside. When I transplant these into this recycled water bottle here. I'm going to get some airflow in here. It's going to make sure that I cannot overwater these plants. Air is going to come through here. Any roots that do form in here, if it tries to get rip bound again, they're going to air prune themselves through these holes. Because I got so many plants to do, I'm going to start with the worst ones first, like this cherry bomb here. This is the one that was completely drooped over this morning. So it is recovering with a little bit of water, but as long as it's root bound, it's not gonna get the right watering that it needs. I did a video in the past about saving overwatered tomatoes. And a lot of times, if your tomatoes are overwatered, it's because they're also root bound. So I'm gonna link to that video so you can check it out. It'll definitely help you out. 
if you have overwatered tomatoes. We're going to start by popping this guy out. Let's take a look. Looks absolutely terrible. You can see towards the base of the cup here where the roots are just wrapping around themselves. You have ones from the bottom growing up to the top. This is no good. You can see here where the moisture is getting trapped up top. The soil's clumping up and at the bottom in the middle here, it's super dry. So these roots are starting to die in the middle of this plant. Now that we've confirmed that this tomato plant is root bound, I'm gonna pop her back in here while we prepare the new upsized pot. So it may seem odd, but my root bound plants were actually caused by the fact that my soil was too good. I gave you guys a video on planting late to avoid transplanting up, but I underestimated the power of the chicken compost added to my soil blocking mix. I had tomatoes and peppers that would have been ready to go out in the garden in 26 days. So even though these guys are only three and a half, four weeks old, they're starting to outgrow these solo cups. That being said, I'm still gonna use that same chicken compost mixture in my new pots. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna fill this guy up, up three quarters of the way to compensate for the size of this. And I have a mixing tub right here. I take my soil, put it in the mixing tub. And then we need to moisten this. I'm going to moisten it a lot less than I normally would if I was potting these things, just to make sure that too much moisture does not get trapped. So I use rainwater for everything. I'm going to take some rainwater, pour it in here. Mix it up. And I'm actually looking for a consistency here that's a lot drier than normal. So I don't want to see any water come out when I squeeze this. I want it to clump together like this and break apart easily, but I don't want any water at all seeping out. It's always easier to add more water than it is to add more soil. Getting a closer look here. My soil kind of holds together, breaks apart easy, but there is no moisture coming out at all. I'm going to go ahead, put a little bit of this into the bottom of this water bottle, pack it in gently. It's going to give me a nice base to set my solo cup root bound plant on top of. Now before we can put this guy inside that new pot, we're going to pop it out. We got to do a little repair work on these roots here. I like to take it and just kind of tap it, shake it. I want to get a lot of this soil off of these roots. You can see when I do this, some of the bottom ones start loosening up. The goal here is to untangle as many of these roots as possible without hurting them. Any areas that are really compact, like the top here, I'll definitely break those up a little bit more. And all these longer guys I find here, I like to take them and just pull them off to the side. Now we're going to get really wild here. I have a lot of these roots that are kind of long and hanging off here. They're kind of going to get folded over and just crushed on themselves if I repot this thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and just take off these guys that are hanging right there. So all these roots now are all around the same length. I probably could take a little bit more off. And I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take a little bit more off right there. Since this is a tomato and when we transplant these, we plant them deeper than they were originally. There's a lot of this extra foliage down here I don't need. You can see a lot of these suckers growing off here, off the nodes. Those are all useless. We're gonna get rid of all those. Any of these bottom leaves. And I am gonna save some of these suckers because I'm gonna try to clone these plants in case this doesn't work out and they die. I'm gonna have an exact copy of these plants just from this. So you can see this plant's looking a lot cleaner. All that bushiness is gone. When we plant this, it's going to be planted deeper and roots are going to grow out of this stem. So even if these ones fail, since they've been mistreated so badly, we're going to have new ones to replace them to help this plant recover 
and grow nice and big. At this point, I'm going to set this inside this container. I'm giving it a little shake because I want these bottom roots to kind of go out to the side. You can reach your hand in here and kind of pull them and fold them so they sit on top of the soil surface. It's hard to see, but here's a more decent look. All those roots that were kind of hanging, I made them so they sit on top of the surface here. Then I'm just going to come back along here and crumple up soil and fill her in on the sides all the way up to the very top of this thing. If you see any of those other roots hanging out of the side as you go, take your finger, lift them up a little bit like this so they're sitting on top of the soil and not pointing straight down and cover those with soil. You want to get the roots to go as many directions as possible inside here. So we got her in our new home. We're buried just below this first branch here. I was tempted to cut both of these off and fill it to the brim and just have this little piece left here. But I think this is going to be fine. So here's my plants. They are staying away from the grow light for at least eight hours, maybe a little bit longer. We'll come back tomorrow, reassess them in the next day or two. These things should be back to normal and looking healthy. It's been two days now. Recovery's going pretty good with these guys. Still going to take them a little bit longer. It's very stressful for these plants when you mess with the roots, but they'll definitely recover. Some are going to be faster than others, but so far we're looking pretty good. They're holding themselves up on their own. Here's one that's root bound still in a solo cup we need to pot up. And even this guy here, starting to have some flowers open up top. Little stress down low, but looking pretty good up here. If you're having issues with your plants, chances are they're root bound. Before you go freaking out, it's always a good idea just to pot them up, change the soil, and you might be really surprised at how fast they recover. Two weeks, everybody gets to go outside. Very exciting time going on which is good because we're starting to get a little bit crowded in here. Save your plants and thanks for watching.